What does your morning routine look like? Are you sure the way you start the day is giving you the best chance of having an awesome day? Chances are, if you're hitting the snooze button too many times, eating junk, panicking, yelling, or forgetting to wear socks, you're probably not giving yourself the kind of start that you need. Well, you're in luck because my guest, Jeff Sanders, is going to give us some practical advice on how to design a morning routine that empowers us and helps us dominate our day. Stay tuned. It's coming up for you on today's One Simple Thing podcast. It's time to build a better business by building a better you. This is One Simple Thing. Welcome to the show. It's Dave Kirby here with you as we uh, head into uh, another episode of the One Simple Thing podcast, episode 352. A reminder, you can get show notes for today, uh, links for everything we're talking about, a link to Jeff Sanders' book as well. It's all available on the show notes for episode 352 when you go to onesimplethingonline.com. So grateful that my friend Jeff Sanders joining me again today. He is the host of the very popular 5 a.m. Miracle podcast. He's a productivity coach and personal development expert, and he is a new best-selling author. He'll add that to the resume. Uh, his book, The 5 a.m. Miracle, Dominate Your Day Before Breakfast, is an Amazon bestseller. So, Jeff, again, welcome back. Thank you for being here on the One Simple Thing podcast. Well, thanks, Dave. Good to be back, back again. I'm so glad to have you here. I know that uh, you and I and a, a few other folks, Jeff Brown from Read to Lead, et cetera, have met uh, on a few occasions and talked about podcasting. So I kind of consider you a friend. So it's, it, you know, as you've released the book and you're becoming a big star now, I'm very honored to have you on my show. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's fun to hear. I like the, the, the star <laughs> title. That's good. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful that you'll even still talk to me. Yeah. I'm not that cool yet. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, your book is called The 5 a.m. Miracle, which is also the name of your podcast. We'll have a link to the podcast and the book on the website. We'll tell you about that in a bit. Uh, but you're all about uh, the 5 a.m. Miracle. All right. And I want to get into a little bit about why 5 a.m. Uh, because people might say, well, why not 10 a.m. or why not 7 a.m.? What's so magical about 5 a.m.? Well, 5 a.m. by itself is a pretty arbitrary time. I chose that for myself back when I was uh, first like, really getting into early mornings. And I chose that for myself because I had to be at work by 9 a.m. And I wanted time to wake up and have enough time in my morning to tackle my marathon training at the time. And so I chose it arbitrarily. But there is something very magical about that hour, about the early morning, the sunrise, the peace and quiet when everyone else is still asleep. Most people are still in bed at that point. Uh, so you do get a lot of benefits by being awake earlier than everyone else, having time to yourself, time for reading, time for working, time for reflecting or meditating or whatever it is you choose to do at that time. It really is your time. And so I love the idea of waking up before the rest of the world's awake to do things that matter the most to me. And so you can choose any time that you want, as long as it's intentional and you can plan your day the way you want your day to go. Uh, but I do think there is something really incredible and almost miraculous about a 5 a.m. wake up call. If you want to be better than other people, and I'm, I'm, you know, that's not necessarily the goal. I want to be better than others. But if you want to achieve more than just your average person, you got to do more than your average person, right? Yeah, certainly. I mean, if you really want your life to be something that you know embodies greatness and you want to achieve big goals, then you do have to sacrifice and you have to make some choices that are going to be different than the average person. And for most people, waking up early is that different thing. So, you know, with the book called 5 a.m. Miracle and, uh, you know, you're you are big on morning routines and uh, you make a, a distinction between the word ritual and routine uh, in the book, which I think is uh, is interesting. But let's get into what routines mean. So uh, maybe first kind of describe that distinction and then let's get started on setting up our own morning routine. Yeah, well, a, a ritual versus a routine, it really is kind of semantics, but I mean, a ritual began as something that's more of a religious connotation, a thing that you would do every single day that is in the exact same order. Um, think of like a church service where people go and you do the exact same thing, the exact same order every Sunday. You know, that's kind of how that operates versus a routine, which is a thing that you do consistently. Uh, the order could change and when you do it might change, but you're still uh, being consistent with your habits. And that's really the goal. And but, so, but, you, you know, I think you make a, an important point in the book. I think it goes beyond semantics, right? Because if I call it a ritual, then if for some reason one day I don't do it, then I feel like a failure and, you know, I feel like I've let you know myself down or whatever else. But with a routine, there's some room for, I don't know, uh, adjustment or whatever in there, right? 
Well, that's a good point. And I forgot about that in the book too. Um, it's true that every day is a little bit different. And I think that if you have a sense of guilt that goes along with your own habits when you don't do them, uh, it, it works against you. And so having flexibility built into your schedule and built into your habits is a really great way to continue to make progress, even on the days where you may not do exactly what you planned. So, uh, you make a you tell a story in the book about how you were, uh, uh, I guess you were gone on a trip and your friends broke into your hotel room and took a picture of you in bed at nine, nine o'clock in the morning. That's true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was, that was a ridiculous day. Yeah. My friends, I took a photo of me with the alarm clock next to my head. It said like nine 45 on it. I, I had been up until like two in the morning with them. And so, yeah, of course I skipped the five a wake up call that morning. But I think that, you know, the point being that, no, I'm, I'm not, you know, so militaristic about it that I have to be out of bed at five every single day. Right. But the intention is still there and the routines and the habits are still in place. And yes, I have those days where I do get out of bed at 10 a.m. and it's kind of ridiculous. But yeah, that's, that's part of the lifestyle too. But that's, you know, again, it's not semantics. That's the difference between, you know, being loaded down with guilt because I broke a ritual or having the flexibility if I have a night where I was up till two o'clock in the morning and I have to get up at five, right? Because it's my routine. Uh, so let's walk it through what a morning routine might look like. If if I'm the person that's saying, okay, I get it, 5 a.m., yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be able to get a whole lot more done. I want to get a head start on everybody else on the day. Where do we start with building that routine in the morning? Well, the actual routine begins the night before. So deciding what time you want to go to bed in order to decide the time you want to wake up. So it really begins with asking asking yourself, you know, what's the ideal wake up time? And if it's a 5 a.m. wake up call is the time you want to begin the day, then 9 p.m. is your new bedtime. So you have to actually orient your day so you are actually going to be asleep on time. And then when you wake up the next morning, now you have the time available. And then when your actual morning routine begins, um, I like to focus on energy. It's my real kind of go-to morning routine uh, kind of philosophy is that I want to have as much energy as possible so the rest of the day can be very productive. And so I'm going to incorporate things like healthy habits with exercise and drinking a lot of water and a morning smoothie for breakfast and a lot of focus on those types of activities so that I can begin my day with my mind and body ready for action. Now, you can choose whatever focus you want with your early mornings, but I think that having a, a philosophy or having a strategy is really important to know what you want your mornings to mean to you. Uh, it could be productivity, it could be work-related, it could be family. Um, I think that energy works best for me, so that's why I chose that. Uh, but I think that knowing what your morning is going to achieve, what the, what the goal of the morning really is, is important right off the bat. And then you can schedule the specifics behind the exact habits you choose and the time frames for those. But knowing the bigger picture of your morning routine, I think is the, the best first step. So I'm thinking back to the last episode where we talked about breaking our, our year down into three month chunks. Instead of thinking about a whole year, we think about uh, the next three months. What are my goals for the next three months? Can my morning routine change based on what my goal is for the next three months? Yes, not only can it change, it should change. I think that the idea that we'll have the exact same routine every day is kind of silly because our lives are, are constantly changing. And so we want our days to evolve and change with our goals. And so if you have you know, your current goal is based on fitness, so you might schedule an early morning run. Your current goal is based on business. You would schedule a work activity. Uh, whatever it is, you're, you're trying to em- embody your current goals and really make sure those are achieved. And so, yes, you are going to uh, evolve your routines based on your goals. Well, and you're a, a personal example of that, right? Because you talk in the book about the fact that when, when you started writing the book, all of a sudden writing the book became part of that morning routine. Yeah, actually, I changed my routine dramatically to this extent that I would wake up at 5 a.m. and be at the library by 6 a.m. And I'd work on the book for about four straight hours. And and that was a very radical shift in how my days used to begin. But that was really effective for me to get the book written on time. And so I think that you have to kind of be willing to make those kinds of changes uh, based on your current goals. And of course, once the book was finished, I went back to more of my typical routine, which included a lot more exercise. But knowing that I was able to to focus on that goal and to make those necessary shifts uh, allowed me to achieve that goal a lot faster. So let's get down to it here. We're nearing the ep- end of the episode here. W- what's our first steps uh, for uh, designing our own ideal morning routine? Very first step is decide your bedtime, which just you know dictates then your morning uh, wake up time. Uh, so know that the sleep schedule. Uh, the second step is to on paper write down what your routine means to you, your actual goal with the, with the morning routine, and then get very detailed and, and write down the specifics as to here it is. You know, literally and in ten minute chunks if you have to get really specific and write down here's what I'm gonna do tomorrow morning. And then the next day, reevaluate and make some changes. And every day, go back to that same list that's written down that you can tweak and update and evolve over time. 
but always going back to the idea that there's intentionality and it's on paper and you're going to really plan your day on purpose. Yeah, I think some of us get overwhelmed with this idea of a morning routine because we we hear people like Michael Hyatt or somebody else where it's just like this really complicated thing. I mean, the guy does a lot in the mornings. I take 20 minutes to go through blogs and then I take 30 minutes to do this. And we think, man, that's a lot of stuff to do. But it starts with our why, right? So why do I want to get up at 5 a.m.? What am I hoping to accomplish? And then we adjust our routine based on our own personal needs. I think what's really funny is I get a lot of emails from people who tell me that they try to do a 5 a.m. wake-up call, but they kept hitting the snooze button or kept going back to sleep. And I would ask them, well, why are you getting out of bed early? And they'll say, well, because you told me to. Like, no, 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 no. Like, you have to actually have a personal reason to wake up or else, of course, you're never going to do it. You have to actually care about your activity. Um, there's a guy that I used to coach who lives in Australia who could never get out of bed early unless it was a day for surfing, in which case he was out of bed at 3 a.m., no problem. I think that when you have that motivation and that reason to wake up, then it, it just works like clockwork. So knowing why is is everything. So you're saying if we're having a hard time not hitting the snooze button at 5 a.m. or whatever time we've adjusted for ourselves, uh, then we need to go back to our why. We need to go back to what's the passion that's going to get me out of bed at 5 a.m. Exactly. I think once you know what it is that you want, it's very easy to get out of bed and make that happen. Jeff, thank you. Uh, again, there's so much more content in the book. I love it. Uh, we'll tell people how to get it in a minute, but uh, looking forward to talking to you next time. And we're going to talk about something you call equilibrium zero, which I, I love the concept, and we'll get into it next time. So, Jeff, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. His book is called The 5 A.M. Miracle. Dominate your day before breakfast and uh, the excitement, the energy, the passion that you hear in Jeff's voice on this podcast. You will also get that uh, same passion from his book as he lays out some really practical kind of rubber meets the road uh, 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 strategies that you can use to get the most out of your day. Would highly recommend you pick up a copy, The 5 A.M. Miracle from Jeff Sanders. There's a banner ad on our website at onesimplethingonline.com. Also, go to iTunes and check out his podcast, also called The 5 A.M. Miracle, and uh, you'll get some great uh, advice weekly from there as well. Really appreciate Jeff being with me today. Uh, As I mentioned a moment ago, we'll be talking about something called Equilibrium Zero on the next episode. Can't wait to share it with you. I'm Dave Kirby. Thank you so much for listening to the One Simple Thing podcast.